All right. Welcome, everybody, to Learn It Live. I'm really excited today to um, have this special guest presenter. Um, so today we have uh, George Preston. He's a certified business coach with um, SoCal Action Coach Business Coaching. Um, and he sent me a bio, which is short and sweet, and I love it. Um, so here's a short version. Uh, he's been running and turning around businesses for 25 years. Uh, he's a business coach with Action Coach. So I'm going to give you the stage. Thank you so much for being here, George. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Heather. Uh, just to be sure everyone can see and hear me, just go ahead and put comments uh, in your where you're watching, put the comments in so I can make sure you can, everyone can see and hear and getting it okay. Uh, as Heather said, I'm a recovering physicist and I've been turning around businesses for about 25 years, uh, including a billion dollar product line for Fortune 100 company and several companies here in Southern California. And now I'm a local resident and in Murrieta and I'm a certified business coach and my business is specifically focused here in Southern California. Just a little bit about Action Coach though. Action Coach is the number one business coaching company in the world with over a thousand coaches in more than 80 countries. Um, it's headquartered in Las Vegas and we coach about 10,000 businesses a year all over the, the globe. So having said that, I'm gonna get right into the meat of today and today is about not the coronavirus, but how your business thrives in the absolute chaos of the coronavirus. Let's see if we can start with this. I, I call it the Corona Coaster. Because here in Southern California, you are all familiar with iconic Space Mountain, where it starts with a sign that says, this is a thrilling, high-speed, turbulent ride through the dark that includes sharp turns and sudden drops. That's exactly where we are in coronavirus and the economic shutdown, isn't it? And we're not at the end of the COVID-19 crisis as we once thought we would have been. In fact, we may not even be at the end of the beginning. And there are rapidly developing changes in public health, environment, public policy, consumer behavior, economic uncertainty that we always have to deal with. And we must build those strategies that will foster broad-based business growth now, but it has been very fatiguing. We thought this would go on for a few weeks, maybe a couple of months, but here we are in November, been a long, long road. So as a business owner, how do we cope? Let's start with a story. Who was the greatest boxer of all time? I give you four choices. Why don't you pick one? Just put a number there in the comments. Who do you think is the greatest boxer of all time? Good, good. Come on, 100% participation now. I got it. Okay, thank you. 75% of the people all over the world have the same kind of response that you've just given me, that Muhammad Ali was the greatest. And yet, George Foreman had more wins, a higher winning percentage, 31 more KOs. Rocky Marciano was undefeated at 49-0 and zero and had six more KOs. Joe Lewis had more wins, a higher winning percentage, and 15 more KOs. So why do we all think that Ali was the greatest? Hmm. They asked Ali that same question. What did he say? He said, I am the greatest, and I said that even before I knew I was. So a reporter then asked Ali, well, when was it that people started asking you about being the greatest? And Ali said, they started asking after I told them I was. So here is the point. Ali created his next future, 
And he said, the fight has won or lost far away from witnesses long before I dance under these lights. Because by telling people he was the greatest, first, he had his own positive mindset. Second, he focused the press's mindset, who reported him consistently with being the greatest. And his, he, he affected his competition, who were all thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm fighting the greatest boxer of all time. So the first thing for you to create your next future here in the Corona Coaster is to start with a positive mindset. Thomas Jefferson, our third president, said nothing can stop the man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goal. But nothing on earth can help man with the wrong mental attitude. So to craft your next future, let's start with this. We must take decisive action. We must act rather than react. We must act now. We must act boldly. And I'm going to go through 11 actions that I suggest you take with your business to thrive under these chaotic conditions. Let's go to another story. Yogi Berra, Hall of Fame baseball player, not really a mathematician. But Yogi Berra said, baseball is 90% mental. The other half is physical. Business success is pretty similar. The first 90% of success is mindset, and the second half is planning. So, what do we need to consider? The World Health Organization says that COVID-19 will be with us for some time, longer than we thought already. According to McKinsey, arguably the world's biggest consulting company, the period of contagion, self-isolation, and economic uncertainty will change the way consumers behave in some cases for years to come. So what we have to realize as business owners, it is a new world and recognize that we are not going back to normal. If you follow my video series, which is available on YouTube, you will know that I have been harping on this for some time because I continuously talk to business owners who say, Oh, if we could just get back to normal. Oh, if we could just get back to normal. Let me suggest that you won't like the answer, but there is no going back to normal. The consumer behavior in response to the COVID-19 lockdown has had phenomenal changes in the way people think. COVID-19 is changing how consumers behave across every aspect of their lives. And the most striking feature of this pandemic is how broad its impact on consumers' lives have been and the blistering pace of change. So over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to review changes we've seen in the marketplace. And this is for you to consider as you consider how you structure your next future. And we'll come back to structuring the next future, but let's take a look at how it's a new world. You need to put these strategies in place to craft your next, your next future where your business will thrive. Now, there is a man named Leonid Kravchuk. Now, he may not be a, a household name, but he's former president of the Ukraine. And Leonid Kravchuk is once quoted as saying, Yesterday, we were at the end of a great precipice. And today we have taken a giant step forward. Don't let that be you. So consumer behavior has changed. The home has become a multiverse. Shopping. Consumption has declined a 12% drop in private consumption with major category shifts. Work. Work off. The office is now in the living room. Work is remote. Work is digital and there is a sharp uptick in the use of digital collaboration tools. How does this impact how you set your next future? In terms of health and well-being, 68% are very or extremely concerned about the length of the pandemic. Well, of course, because it's affecting our mindset as well as our physical health. Telehealth options and online searches for telemedicine increased ninefold. Entertainment has completely changed. Consumers stuck at home are spending more time downloading game apps. 
45% of consumers report using more online streaming services at home. Netflix added 16 million subscribers in the first five months of the pandemic, and Disney Plus doubled its subscriber base to 50 million. That took, took Netflix seven years to get to that point. Huge consumer behavior shifts. Travel and nobility, uh, mobility. Consumers are staying home in droves. Tourism has been grounded. Airline travel has declined 90%. Communication and, infora and information. Overall, media consumption has increased in almost all channels. More television, more radio, more social media. Readership of online news has ridden, even risen 39%. But print media is the only place where there is decline with a 33% drop in readership. How can you build all these trends into your next business? These are for your consideration and evaluation. There's nothing here that I've talked about so far that you don't know, but I wanted to recall that to you so that we can help use this information as we look at how we build our next future. Please be aware that even the trends that I've talked about are not homogenous. Significant variations exist in terms of which consumer segment you might be working in, what's your consumer experience, what are the geographies, what are the values, all of these things change, but you must be rethinking how and where your business connects with your consumers. Okay, as I said, point one, recognize we're not going back to the new normal, so I suggest you embrace your pivots. All of you that have survived since March until November have pivoted in some way, but you've probably been thinking, oh, I can't wait to get back to normal. That normal is not coming the way it was in 2019. Embrace your pivots. Institutionalize your pivots. There's a reason that 800 Walgreen pharmacies now offer home delivery all across the United States. And look at El Fresco Dining. It used to be a nice thing in a small number of restaurants. Now every restaurant has it. What has been the pivot for your business? And how can you institutionalize it? How can you expand it? Can you go to even new customers with your business? Can you offer new services? Can you offer new products? These are the questions you need to be asking yourself as you look at how much the market has changed and how your business can thrive. Okay, so two things, positive mindset, embrace your pivots. What do we do next? Well, you might be asking yourself, well, how do I know if my business can even survive with a mandated 25% occupancy? Very good question. One of the next things you need to be looking at is your cash flow forecasts. Lay out your revenues, lay out your expenses, lay out some what if scenarios. What if we can open up? What if we can't open up? What if we open up and close back down as we saw happen? Look at your break even points. Where are you making money? And decide how you can best set up your business model and your future so that you can be successful. All of these things are crucial. You have to know your break even point because at 25% occupancy, it's going to be very difficult to get there. If you're a restaurant, for example, Maybe you want to expand your outside dining. Maybe you want to reduce your inside footprint. Maybe you want to become a ghost restaurant. There's many different future models, and only you know what's best for your business if you work through your break-even points and your cash flow forecasts. Adjust it. Adjust your assumptions and repeat the forecast. Adjust it, repeat your assumptions, and look at your forecast you will be able to then fine tune what you see as your business model for the future. So that's point three. Point four is to create your next future is focus on your high impact actions. Let's face it, you'll never have enough time to do everything that you may want to do, 
there's only 86,400 seconds in any day and 8,760 hours in a year. There's no amount of management or worry or anxiety that's going to change that. That is what you have to work with. So what do we do? People may tell you to prioritize your schedule. I say do not do that. Instead, schedule your priorities. You see the difference there. Don't take a list of all the possible things that you want to try to do and prioritize it. Instead, start with the priorities. The Boston Consulting Group has a really good way of doing that. And they say, look at your low-hanging fruit. That is a four block that says, go to your easiest to implement and your highest impact. So schedule the priorities that are easy to implement and have your highest impact. Okay, that's step four. What's number five? Rebuild your company for speed and agility. Because the situation is still highly volatile. We've already seen, we were in the red, we're back in the purple. Up until now, you and your staffs might have been relying on crisis mode to survive. But a crisis mode for your business is really the same as it is for your person. You rely on adrenaline. You're going at 150%. You can only do that for so long. What we need to do is take a deep breath, move out of crisis mode, and build that mode into your structure. Add foundational elements of your operating model that will help you steer your organization with extreme uncertainty. That means you have to be flexible. You have to be ready to move at a moment's notice. You have to be able to shift up or shift down. That is what the agility piece means. The situations will continue to evolve. You have to be more agile than you ever have been in the past. That's necessary to create your next future. One of the things you need to do is build your feedback loops so that you know when things change. You need to have information coming in from your customers, from your marketplace, from your vendors. Look outside your ivory tower. Um, you have to be able to move quickly and you want to know what's changing in the outside world that's going to impact you in your world. So if you don't have those things in place, if you don't use your social media analytics, make sure you establish a way to do that. Look at your analytics, look at your customer feedback, look at your vendors. All of those things are important for you to know quickly what's going on in the outside world and how you can adjust to it. These operational, uh, your next operational model will need these foundational elements to build into that flexibility. It's very, very important that you're able to move quickly. Let's go to number six then, what is next? And that is, there's a reason that many of us have not wanted to change. So this is what I call the change formula. R on the right is your resistance to change. All of us have a certain inertia built in. We are in a place that we're kind of comfortable. So our resistance to change is high. What causes us to overcome that? Well, D over on the far left is your dissatisfaction. And if you were in a good place before COVID, your dissatisfaction was probably low. But as you look at it now, the way your business has been impacted has probably driven your satisfaction up to a massive level. So you're very, very unhappy with the situation as it exists right now. That might be enough to overcome your resistance, but there's two more factors. Your dissatisfaction is multiplied by your vision. In other words, you can be very dissatisfied, but if you don't have a vision of a better future, you still are not able to move away from that resistance to change. So be envisioning what success for you looks like in the future. How will you be able to take your dissatisfaction and add your vision and overcome your inertia or resistance to change? The one other element that's important is the first steps. Once you have a high dissatisfaction and a great vision, 
you need to start to see how you could possibly achieve that. What are those first steps? So this is a perfect time to use this change formula to drive your imagination. Remember when you first started your business? You had all kinds of ideas about things you might want to do differently, things you might want to expand, things you might want to expand to. And yet, as you kind of settled in to a successful routine, some of those ideas kind of faded away. Use this dissatisfaction of the moment to help you drive your resistance to change and move forward. 50% of all businesses in the U.S. right now have some employees working from home. Um or working remotely, that is an opportunity for you. How can you harness that? Okay, that's step number six, reimagining your business from the top down. Because we can't keep operating in crisis mode. It's way too exhausting. So we want to talk about making some bold moves then. Can you change or expand your customer base? Maybe you can expand your channels. Maybe you should expand your products. Maybe you should change your products. Are there products that just absolutely will never resonate with your customer base again because of the things that we've talked about, all the permanent changes that have, have occurred out in the world? Can you imagine Oracle, who is one of the most absolutely staid biz large business companies in the world and very successful at it, just invested with TikTok. Is that a good match? They decided to take a bold move and completely change their customer base, not just for businesses, but now for consumers. Very bold move for them. How do you use that sort of thinking to reshape your go-to-market strategy? Restaurants have already had to do it. For a period of time, all they had to do was be able to supply food on a to-go basis how much of that's going to stay? Crises are not for the faint of heart. Tweaks are seldom enough. Your moves you have to be thinking about are bold. They might be fundamental to your business, but they might be the thing that makes you thrive in the next future. Move to number eight. Reset your technology plans. Now, there's a lot of talk about technology, but let's actually look at some of the things that have changed. Focus on digital. 82% of customers say they read reviews online before purchasing. That's a pretty new development. How much of your marketing is now based on making sure you have good online reviews? 68% of marketers say that paid online ad is very important or extremely important. Perhaps if two-thirds are there, that's something that you need to be looking at. 80% of marketers report being satisfied with their ROI on video. Perhaps video should be part of your mix. Now, as we start to look at some of these digital things, think about it this way. Zappos, in 10 years, went from a startup to a $1.2 billion valuation. Zappos, did they invent shoes? Well, no, of course not. Well, did they invent the internet? Not that either. So if they didn't invent shoes or the internet, how did they go to $1.2 billion in 10 years? They focused on digital and they focused on the consumer experience. Let that be a lesson to your business. As you look at your reviews, if you haven't had a Google My Business listing, you have to get one immediately. Uh, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce said we've moved forward 10 years and 90 days with e-commerce. McKinsey says digital interaction are now two times more important to customers than they were before the pandemic. The, the telemedicine jumped 10 times, a whole order of magnitude in 15 days. In June alone, online sales grew 76% from the month before. If you don't have a, an important two-year strategy digital footprint, you have to do it now. As I said with Zappos, the second half of that was your customer experience. Super, super important. And according to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, 86% of consumers say they pour, pay more 
for a great customer experience. Look at Zappos compared to mall shoe stores. You can't even try things on, and yet they have gone berserk. Contrast Uber with taxis. The first time I tried Uber, a number of years ago, of course, but I've been using taxis for you know a decade. I was like, well, I think I'll try this. I was absolutely elated with the customer experience, how easy it was to get it to come to me. I didn't have to go to it to know exactly what the, the ride was going to be, who the driver was. It was amazing because they reimagined the customer experience. Contrast Amazon with Home Depot. Home Depot is one of those places that has some structural arrogance because they have every um, municipality in the country with a brick and mortar store. They kind of think that they're going to keep that business. Things have permanently changed. It is so much easier now to get hardware from Amazon than it is Home Depot. They're going to see some difficult times in the future. So part eight of your next future is reset your technology plans. Okay, number nine, reevaluate your footprint. You are no longer bound by geography. I have a client right now that has realized that because he is no longer bound by geography, he has put things in place. He has a plan now to increase his business by five times over the next 12 months. Five times bigger business in 12 months. Because there's no nothing keeping him constrained now where he used to be constrained. Keep in mind, if you say, well, ah, that's not for me because you still have a high, dis, uh, excuse me, a high resistance to change and a low dissatisfaction, remember your competition is now neither bound by geography. So even if you decide not to reevaluate your footprint, someone else that has never been a competitor before might be coming into our, your marketplace. That's number nine. We're almost rolled up now. Let's go on to number 10. In creating your next future, look beyond your four walls. Take a leadership role in climate and sustainability. And it still matters, even with all the craziness that's going on. This is why I tell you that. In over the last six or seven months, there has been a 72% increase in global investment in sustainable funds. Now, with all the other stuff going on, how is that possible? Well, the point I want you to think about is it resonates with your customers, with your clients. It's an important thing. So don't suddenly let a crisis drive everything out of your else out of your mind. You still have to wrestle with the, the climate, sustainability, your community. What's your role in the community? During this difficult period, were you supported? Now, those of you here in Murrieta and Wildemar, I know you were, not only by the communities themselves, the business development areas, and the Chamber of Commerce. You have gotten support. The question is, did you offer support? Were you part of the solution? And you know the other half of that saying. So look outside your four walls. Keep in mind how you fit into your community and your country. The last one, point 11, is embed purpose into everything you do. Now, this is pretty important. Simon Sinek, who you can find books, tapes, videos on YouTube, has talked about your why. What is driving you into business and to your interactions with your customers and your community? He says, this is very important. Your why is what it should be driven by your customers. Do your customers give you the reason that you're in business to satisfy them, to make their lives better, to help them? Because if that is true, that will resonate with your customers. They know what is genuine and what is you know, kind of tacked on the outside just to make things look good. And if it resonates that your purpose and your being decision-making is purposeful, that it will resonate with your customers and they will know that
that you are there to support them and to help them. These are the sorts of things that you want to look at embedding into your business model, your customers, as you create your next future. So here we go. These are the 11 points that I want to make sure that you look at and start to build into your business, your self, as you build your future for success. Now, this may seem, well, overwhelming. They were small points, but every one of those points can be enormous. For example, rebuild your business from the top down. How easy is that to say and how hard is it to do? So are you one of those people that are afraid your business may never recover? All right, I'm gonna give you a neurological hack to help you through this next period. I'm using this from a man named Kerwin Ray. Again, you can find him on YouTube. So he says you have to stay positive. And of course, this is what we said on step number one, stay positive. But Kerwin Ray says, repeat this mantra to yourself out loud. This is simple. This is easy. This is fun. Say it with me. This is simple. This is easy. This is fun. This is simple. This is easy. This is fun. The more you repeat that to yourself, you are building those neurological pathways in your brain that you will start to realize that it's true. You will believe it and it will become so. This is simple. This is easy. This is fun. Okay, to finish up. Now we will get to questions. But to finish up, I can guarantee that 12 months from now, you will arrive. The question is where? I hope that today I gave you at least five to 10 ideas to take action on. And you've been taking some notes and you know where you're going to go from here. If I can help, I have a 60-minute business strategy session you can sign up for just by noting this uh, link here, my Calendly link. And I'll be happy to meet with you. No charge, no strings attached, just to help you decide how to put that plan together for your next future. The uh, founder of Action Coach is Brad Sugars. He said, words can inspire, thoughts can provoke, but only actions truly bring you closer to your dreams. In other words, do not let yourself take notes, say, oh, that was interesting, put it in the trash, and move on with things the way they've always been. Get into action. You can change your business. You can change your life. You can create your next future instead of just waiting for the new normal. I'm George Preston with Action Coach. This is all my contact information. And now, Heather, let's take a look and see if we have some questions. All right. Thank you so much, George. That was excellent. Um, I found myself going, oh, my, I was, I don't know if you could see me at the little quarter, but I'm like, yes, or, oh my gosh, I, I feel <laughs> the same way. <laughs> um, so we don't have any questions at this point, um, but I I have some, uh, a couple of questions actually. Um, oh, is that your family? <laughs> That's a beautiful. Oh, yeah, I forgot I was still sharing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll go ahead and remove it. It's okay. <laughs> so, um, I know you mentioned, you know, the the Corona coaster and just all of the things that the businesses um, around us have had to uh, do as far as opening and closing and changing. You know, all of the rules change. Um, so, for like restaurant owners out there. You know, how do they figure out how to move forward with the mandated 25% capacity restrictions or being outside? What would be your, you know, your best advice about that? Yeah, restaurants are very tough, very, very tough nut uh, right now. Typically, restaurants have a relatively um, small profit margin in the first place. So, so every restaurateur knows they have to have a certain number of people in their restaurant whenever they're open to help them reach their break-even points. And this was point three or four that I talked about in terms of break-even points. So it's super important if you're a restaurateur that you take a look at where are my break-even points and 
what can I do to affect those things? And I know it's highly emotional for you because all of our businesses are our babies, but lay it out in terms of your cash flows. And it will tell you, and it'll take emotion out of it, it will tell you where you'll be able to break even and become profitable and where you will not. And once you've done through that exercise, you will see that there's going to be certain situations that you just can't sustain anymore in certain situations that you're going to need to move to more. So that's one of the reasons we've seen here in, in Los Angeles, especially these ghost restaurants popping up, which, which were restaurants that, that basically don't have a physical footprint at all anymore, but they still are supplying food to their clients. But there's a lot of other things that you might do. For example, you might go to a subscription program where you have uh, people that every Friday night get a fish dinner or every Thursday get liver and onions. Oh, heaven forbid. <laughs> but no. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be there. I will not be there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there are things that you can start to lay out, and then you'll know whether or not that that's going to help you or it's going to hurt you. And that's important that you build those in because you can look forward. That's your that's your what if scenarios. Yeah, no, I love that. Numbers are numbers and you can't you can't add emotion into that. So that's a really, really good piece of advice to kind of, you know, really take that long, hard look at your business and try to figure things out from there. Um, so I, I loved that you mentioned don't prioritize your schedule, schedule your priorities. Because <laughs> um, I definitely feel like I never have enough hours in the day um, to accomplish all the things that we want to do here at the chamber. Um, so do you have any um, suggestions on how you can kind of get a hold of your time and, and you know, be as productive as possible, I suppose, with it, with yeah. the limited amount of time we have? <laughs> it, it, yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, I have a, uh, a short video that I would be happy to to send you a link to if anyone's interested, uh, because the long version there's about ten or twelve steps to time mastery. How do you master time? Now, now remember, you can't really manage it because there's only so many seconds in a day and hours in a, in a year. But but you can kind of master it. Um, and I'll, I'll be happy to send uh, send you a video link to it's about four minute video of six of those key steps. And and one of the things that it says is start with what are the most impactful things. Um, do the most impactful things. Avoid the temptation if you have a bunch of little things on your to do list and you say oh, I'm going to get those done this morning and you feel good because you crossed off six things but none of them have an impact. Just, just banish that temptation. Get rid of those. Don't ever do those if they're not going to have an impact. And do the things that, that do have an impact. Uh, another key one is a lot of times, if you're like me, there's certain things I really don't like to do. Yeah. Um, I call those, <laughs> you know, the, the toads. If you have a toad on your list, lick it first. Get it out of the way. It doesn't get any better looking as the day goes on. <laughs> Lick the toad, get rid of it, move on with your day. Oh my God, I love yeah. that. It, it, you know, if, if you let it sit there all day, it's not getting any more attractive. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh, I haven't, I haven't thought of it or heard heard about it that way. That's excellent. Oh my gosh. Well. I, I guess everybody in the office is going to be like, why are you licking toads all the time? No, <laughs> I'm getting it out of the way, guys. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So um, just a little bit more on like your background and kind of the stuff that you offer businesses. So let's get let's get granular. What is a business coach? Uh, what types of businesses do you coach? OK, uh if you think about a metaphor, uh, or at least at least a comparison with athletic coaches, athletic coaches don't necessarily work with people who are just just not completely in shape at all. A lot of times, they're working with people that are already fairly successful, but they help them to improve their game 
improve their fitness, whatever it is. And that's the way we work with businesses because your business is the same way. Um, whether it's a startup or whether it's an, uh, a business has been in existence for a hundred years, there you'll grow, you'll get to a certain point where you'll start to plateau or in a case like this, maybe you've gone down like many of us have because of the, the COVID and the shutdowns. And then you need to go back into growth mode. And then when you start to plateau, we'll change things up again and you go keep going up. So building those strategies into place um, is really what I do. I help businesses go from successful to champions. Now, as a coach, though, it's a little different than being a consultant. A consultant will come in and actually do a project with you or for you. A coach will work with you so that you do it. And, and the difference is, again, if, if you go into the gym and the coach says, okay, uh, uh, Ms. Heather, today we're going to work on our core. Sit down here, have a glass of wine while I do, you know, crunches. <laughs> that well, won't work for me. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's a pretty good mental picture, isn't it? You say, oh, that, that's a good idea. You know, you do the work. I'll sit here and have some wine or maybe a beer, and, you know. But the, but the point is, it's not going to help your physical fitness. It's not going to help your core get any stronger. So a coach is like that. A coach will work with you and your business to help, to help um, hold your feet to the fire, to help make sure it's a balanced approach, to give you lots of new ideas um, about how you might do it. But in the end, it's your business. It's your baby. All we're going to do is help you make that person, that business more successful. Excellent. So do you um, have a specialty of businesses or do you, what types of businesses do you like to coach? Um, I have a very wide uh, array. I have uh, in my client uh, portfolio, uh, I have manufacturing. I have a lot of manufacturing experience, in fact, in my background, uh, but also uh, attorneys and physicians and trades. Um, all of them have similar issues from this standpoint. Um, all of them have an absolute mastery of their expertise. Now, plumbers know all about plumbing. Physicians know all about medicine because they've, they've studied or practiced with people and thank heavens that a physician knows about medicine. But when did they ever have time to, to learn about a business? My really? very, very first um, client ever was a physician. And I asked her, well, where do your patients come from? And she said, I don't know. I never thought about it. Yeah. But, but you know, that's, that's an important question. And that's like where the business coach comes in to help you understand, um, know where your customers are coming from. How do you get that to grow? How do you, you know, um, in fact, we have a structure we call the five ways to business growth that talks a lot about five different strategies that are backed up by over 350 tactics of how you get your business to grow. Um, and, and that may be true. Not all 350 are going to work for any given business. Right. But the five-way structure, the skeletal structure, and many of those strategies will work for a business because you know what your expertise is. Right. But what we help you with is what is the business side of that? How do you get that to, to be a growth engine for you? Excellent. I love it. Well, um, we have a comment from Facebook. Um, we have April here and she says, great advice. And I think that's when we were talking about um, licking the toad <laughs> and getting yourself out of the way. So thanks for that comment, April. Um, so um, how can everybody get a hold of you if they have any other questions or, or you know, maybe want to explore some business coaching opportunities with you? Um, how can people get a hold of you? I have a, uh, a presence, of course, through the chamber because I am a Murrieta Wildemar chamber member. Yes. Um, but I also have a presence on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, I have a website, which is audacious.actioncoach.com. And every and everyone should feel completely comfortable emailing me. I'm happy to 
hear from anybody. Uh, it's George, uh, George Preston at actioncoach.com. And I see you've put that up there in the, uh, in the box. Thank you so very much. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. And um, you said you had like a YouTube and your website. Is that where we can find more about, um, you know, all of these fun tips for uh, doing better business? Absolutely. All about licking toads. It's uh, six <laughs> steps of licking toads. Oh, my <laughs> this <goodness>. season, of course. <laughs> 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 but yes, I have a whole uh, whole array of, of um, videos, video tips on business, and I have a newsletter. I'd be happy to add anyone to. Just reach out to me if you'd be interested, and I send out weekly. It's really a, a video blog of uh, a blog uh, where I send out video tips every week on how to make your business you know work just a little bit better. So spend five minutes a week, uh, and it will help you with your business. I love it. That's excellent. Um, well, George, uh, thank you so, so, so much for being a guest on Learn It Live. Uh, we really, really appreciate your expertise and advice. And again, if anybody would like to get in contact with George and maybe ask some questions you were afraid to ask here, um, again, his email is georgepreston at actioncoach.com. Thanks again, George. And bye, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Heather. Thank you, everyone. Good luck.